Hello, I'm Dr. Conti with Southeast Veterinary Neurology. Today, let's talk about two common surgical techniques in veterinary neurology, the ventral slot procedure and the hemilaminectomy. Both techniques are designed to relieve pressure on your pet's spinal cord, but they're used for slightly different conditions and have different approaches. Understanding each procedure can give you insight into what to expect if your pet's condition requires one of these surgeries. The ventral slot procedure is often recommended when your pet has a disc herniation in their neck, usually in the cervical spine or the C1 to C7 vertebrae. This procedure is more commonly performed on small to medium sized dogs Although larger sized dogs are also susceptible to injury in this location requiring this procedure. In this surgery, we make an incision from the underside of your pet's neck or the ventral side to reach the spinal cord. Then we create a small slot in the vertebral bone to carefully remove the herniated disc material that's pressing against the spinal cord. This helps relieve the pressure directly, which is responsible for pain, as well as any neurologic deficits your pet may have. The hemilaminectomy is typically chosen for disc herniations in the thoracic spine or the lumbar spine, so in the middle or lower back area, most commonly in the T3L3 and the L4 to S3 spinal cord segments. This is most often necessary in small to medium dogs like Dachshunds, French Bulldogs, Shih Tzus, Pekingese, and Beagles, which are prone to intervertebral disc disease. But again, as with disc herniations in the neck, larger dogs are also susceptible to injury here. Although very rare, as cats are less prone to intervertebral disc disease, they still may require a hemilaminectomy. In this surgery, we make an incision down the middle of the back of your pet over the affected area, then approach the spine from that side. We remove part of the bony vertebrae, the lamina, on that side to reach the spinal canal and decompress the spinal cord by removing the herniated disc material. The ventral slot preparation includes advanced imaging, usually with MRI, to precisely locate the herniation and evaluate the spinal cord's condition. The MRI takes about one to one and a half hours, while the subsequent surgical procedure takes about one to two hours, and is quite delicate due to the important structures located in the neck, like the esophagus and the trachea. The hemilaminectomy involves advanced imaging, such as an MRI, to pinpoint the exact location and severity of the compression. The surgery usually takes two to three hours depending on how many discs are herniated and require surgical correction. While this surgery is a bit longer, it is one that is performed very commonly. The ventral slot is minimally invasive with only a small incision and it's quite effective for cervical disc herniations. This technique is preferred over a dorsal approach or through the upper portion of the neck because less muscle dissection is necessary. This makes sense from a patient standpoint as well because less muscle dissection normally corresponds to less post-operative pain and a quicker recovery. The small working space also means less visibility as the drilled slot cannot comprise more than a third of the vertebrae laterally or longitudinally. The hemilaminectomy allows for a larger working space, making it suitable for larger pets or those with severe compression. It's a longer procedure, typically involves a larger incision secondary to more muscle dissection, which can lead to a longer recovery time and potentially more pain postoperatively. For spinal surgeries, it's especially important to prevent any jumping, rough play, or movement that could disrupt healing. A crate is usually the best way to facilitate the rest period. Activity needs to be highly restricted with your pet only being taken out with support to relieve themselves, especially in the first month. Normally, I suggest 23 out of 24 hours a day, they are within their crate and they get four 15 minute bathroom breaks throughout the day. 
Ventral slot has a slightly shorter recovery time, a hospital stay of normally around two to three days, followed by four to six weeks of strict rest at home with limited activity, and then two more months of limited activity before returning to normal. Success rates are generally quite good, around 80 to 90% for pets that undergo this surgery promptly with an experienced surgeon, depending on the severity of the injury. Larger pets or those with severe damage may take longer to fully recover. Physical therapy is often recommended to help regain strength. Recovery from a hemilaminectomy generally involves hospitalization for three to five days and four to six weeks of at-home crate rest, followed by two months of limited activity before a return to normal. Success rates are also high, around 90% for pets pending the pet's presenting status that undergo the surgery promptly with an experienced surgeon. Larger dogs or pets with severe damage may take longer to fully recover, and physical therapy is often recommended to help regain strength. The choice between these surgeries really depends on the location of the disc herniation and your pet's size and condition. If your pet has a cervical disc herniation, the ventral slot is often the preferred approach due to its effectiveness in that region. If the herniation is in the thoracic or lumbar spine or the middle lower back, a hemilaminectomy is typically recommended. Both procedures have similar success rates, but the ventral slot has a slightly shorter recovery time and may be a little less painful initially due to the smaller incision and less muscle dissection. Regardless, close monitoring, proper restriction of activity, and sometimes physical therapy can make a big difference in your pet's recovery. And as always, Timely surgery improves the outcome significantly and affords your pet the best possible chances at a complete and full recovery. The ventral slot procedure and hemilaminectomy are effective surgeries designed to alleviate spinal cord compression, each tailored to a specific area of the spine and certain patient characteristics. With the right preparation and care, most pets go on to recover well and enjoy a good, if not normal, quality of life with only few limitations long term, being no high impact activity, mainly jumping on and off the furniture. Please feel free to reach out to Southeast Veterinary Neurology with any specific questions about these procedures for your pet.